Hi guys, I'm just going to do a little presentation on uh, the 3008 book. Just things to mark up and how the tables work and the, all the tables that you need to know for your LET. So the first thing we're looking at is 3008.17, right, which is the most current version of the 3008 book. So what I'm going to do first, the first table I'm going to go to is ta the table 1, which is to do with temperature readings. So if we have a look at this table here, right, you can see the first column has normal use. So what we do with that is that's where the cable temperature is most important. So for example, if we have a look here, we can see V75 and V90. Now V90, if you come across, is 75 degrees. So these are the temperature ratings that we will see inside the questions when we write, look at it OAT under cable selection and um, different ones like, it doesn't apply much, so much in voltage drop, well it does, because we do need to know the temperature rating of the cable to pick the right column. So this is also in the 3000 um, AS3000 as well. So you'll see this, it's on the table 10, it's on page 19, you'll see that in the reference table when I talk about it shortly. So, now the next one we're gonna to go to is down to voltage drop, all right? So the next page we're looking for is voltage drop. I'll talk about that as well. I'll come back to this page in a sec. Um, but the main thing I'm going to talk to is go down to table B1. So when we look at table B1, right, it says list of tables, appendix B. Appendix B is like the reference for all your tables in this book. So if I just close it back up a little bit, all right, and then we have a look down here. We can see that this first one, table one, is the temperature rating of cables, all right? So that's the one we first saw. That's the most important table because that tells me if I don't understand what the definition is, like HLP90 or HLT110, all right, that'll give me the, what the definition is and what the normal use is, okay? The next four down here that I've got marked here are our reference tables, all right? So if you have a look, those reference tables there, right, are not to give me the answer, but to give me a guide to where I need to go. Now, they actually give me a guide to these ones down here. So if I have a look from table four all the way down through to table 15, these are referred to in those three, um, those four pages. So if we have a look down here, they also follow in a sequence, 75, 90, 110, 75, 90, 110. They're the three that we refer to on the guide table, and I'll go back through the guide table in a minute. So they go through all the different temperature ratings, two core. Um, now, the cables are either multi-core or single core, so we have a look at those. We don't talk about the neutral because it's either active neutral or three actives, all right? So they go all the way down, so we have our list of tables, all right? If we have a look at the first four here, we have, I'll just bring it out a little bit more. So we have unenclosed in air, which means like basically a conduit fixed to a wall or a, um, any open surface. Enclosed being enclosed in a conduit but in open air. All right. Buried direct in the ground, which means the cable's buried directly in the ground with um, like under a slab or something like that. And the other one is underground wire enclosure, which basically means any type of cable buried underground in enclosed situation. Could be a duct, could be a conduit, could be... Um, you know, PVC, but some type of enclosure, all right? All right, so then those four there make reference. So they're our reference tables. If we come over the other side, when we've looked down the page, so they, I talked about these coming down to number 17. There is another two that don't appear on the two, table three, one to three, four, is these two about MIMS cables, okay? They're the only two tables that deal with fire rated cables. MIMS is a type of copper conductor, so they're flame-proof cables, all right? They're not about radox cables or anything like that. So they talk about, it's about a multi-core and a single core. That's the only difference between the two tables is one's for multi-core and one's for single core cables, all right? That's tables 18 and 19. You come down further, we have cables which, if you look at the last column on table three, one to three, four, they'll tell you about bunched cables or groups of cables, more than one cable. So if we have a look here, 22, 23, 24 is for bunch cables, all right? So bunch cables like it could be, so we have uh, inside conduits, all right? 
The other one is a single core and then multi-core. And then the next two we get down to is buried cables. So buried cables in the ground. All right, single core again, multi-core. And then the last two is underground. All right, so we have cables here, the same here, single and multi-core. So these are all referred to, when you look at 3132, they'll actually automatically point you to these right tables here. Okay, they will tell you 2322. Um, the only one that gets a bit tricky to read is table 22, which I will do a little bit about that in a minute. We come across the next page, all right, and you can see I've got a bit of writing here and all that, but 27.1, I'll just bring that up a little bit more. All right. So these do not appear in reference tables 31 to 34. You need to know where these are and what they do. Nothing will tell you or bring you back to these derating tables. So these are derating tables, all right. So 27.1, right is to do about air temp cables so if you're looking at a cable it's above ground and anything the derating temp for that or if you look at the table will be derating one is 40 degrees soil temperature in underground 25 degrees so the derating for that is one is 25 degrees and then table 28 one half a meter in the ground unenclosed cables or what we call multi-core all right and depth of laying um, half a metre, um, basically for cables which are inside a conduit. All right, unenclosed means, yeah, the cable's buried directly in the ground. And the last one is 28, or 29, sorry, for soil resistivity, all right, 1.2. So all the values I've given you here are all D ratings of one. If they move outside that temperature, or those, those um, depth of laying, you will then attract a D rating, okay? So those five tables are fairly important, all right? And we then move down to the next slot, right, which is voltage drop, okay? But I'll come back to those very shortly. I want to talk about these. So where I'm going to go back to now, right, is go back down to the three, four tables, have a look um, about the, the front of the table, so how they work. So if we have a look at how these work, so we have, so what we have is we have the cable type two core, three core, two core, three core. So they have now this one here we're dealing with is, so I'll just turn the page back over. We're dealing with D ratings unenclosed, all right? So the bottom line is you have the type of cable you're dealing with, all right? So you can see that this is enclosed with two, two single cores or two three cores. It then has a description or the table reference of where you need to go. When you look at this, the first table is 75 degrees, the second table is 90 degrees, and the third table is 110. Then this is for aluminium, this is for copper, sorry, copper and aluminium. I'll put that in the wrong way. Copper, aluminium, copper, aluminium. It then has a description of where the cables are. In air, plaster, cement sheet, render wall, and all that, they have a description. And the last one is a derating table. So when I talked about this before, we had table 22, table 22, all right? These are where these tables I was talking about with the derating tables of grouped cables. So if I turn to 22, it makes reference to what I need to look at as grouped cables. So if we go across the page here again, we have the same thing, all right? And this is what we call enclosed. This part down here being enclosed is talking about insulation, all right? Thermal insulation. Um, if you have partially surrounded, that means three sides. So this is sitting on a bit of timber or something like here, and it's covered only around three sides. If we come down here, this is fully enclosed in thermal insulation. All right, could be inside a conduit, okay? All right, and sitting inside. So there is a different situ situation, and this is where it partly says um, electrically... Um, enclosed and unenclosed um, partially surrounded like i said three sides completely surrounded means all sides but we still have this reference table here table 22 22 going down all right and that tells me that i need to look at it if i've got more than one conductor together i need to go there and get my d ratings all right so if we go to table 33 this is talking about buried direct in the ground so 
things here we have. So we have like single core cables, okay, put in the ground at half a meter. So they could be laid in a trefoil um, formation, which is a triangle or two, two core. And we talk about the two core being in a multi-core cable and same here. But when we get across here to descriptions like here, we have table 25.1 for the two single cores and table 25.2 if they're a multi-core. So there is differences with cable space. You've got to remember that everything we're doing with cables is once they're grouped together, they form like a big heat sink. So what we need to do is try to work out how to get rid of the heat by separating them. And that's where the table 25 talks about half a meter in the ground. But the separation means we allow more current to flow. Same thing applies here, 75 degrees, 90 degrees and 110. All right. Um, table 10 and 11 are still the same, but 20, this one's for copper and this one's for aluminium, all right? Okay, so we're looking at all the different tables here and all that stuff, how they all work. We go to tables 25, 26, 1 and all that stuff. So they all have different um, values of how you work. And what they do is as you go across, you'll either have two cables or three cables, all right? So what I'll do is I'll come back to these in a minute and I'll have a little bit more look at voltage drop.